All right, just going to do a video going through a bunch of scripture references refuting this Calvinistic heresy of God causing sin and demonstrating the fact that this Calvinist heresy that God causes, ordains, and authors sin is contradictory to God's nature. So let's get right into the scriptures refuting this uh, borderline blasphemous Calvinist heresy. So first of all, the scriptures show that God is pleased with holiness. 1 Thessalonians chapter 4, verses 1 to 3 says, Furthermore, then we beseech you, brethren, and exhort you by the Lord Jesus, that as ye received, as ye have received of us, how ye ought to walk and to please God, so ye would abound more and more. For ye know what commandments we gave you by the Lord Jesus, for this is the will of God, even your sanctification, that ye should have that ye should abstain from fornication. Simple simple as enough. It's saying and to please God. That's how it works. You know, holiness pleases God. Hebrews chapter 13, verses 15 to 16. By him, therefore, let us offer the sacrifice of praise to God continually, that is, the fruit of our lips, giving thanks to his name, but to do good and to communicate, forget not, for with such sacrifices, God is well pleased. Again, we see this. God is pleased with that kind of stuff. First John 3, verses 21 down to verse 22. Beloved, if our heart condemn us not, then have we confidence toward God, and whatsoever we ask we receive of him, because we keep his commandments and do those things that are pleasing in his sight. Colossians 1 verses 9 to 10. For this cause we also, since the day we heard it, do not, see, do not cease to pray for you and to desire that ye might be filled with the knowledge of his will in all wisdom and spiritual understanding, that ye might walk worthy of the Lord unto all pleasing, being fruitful in every good work and increasing in the knowledge of God. It's God's, it's God's desire not for you to live in sin. You know, he doesn't author it, as Calvinism would blasphemously claim. Colossians chapter 3, verses 18 down to verse 20. Wives, submit yourselves unto your own husbands, as it is fit in the Lord. Husbands, love your wives, and be not bitter against them. Children, obey your parents in all things, for this is well-pleasing unto the Lord. And also, last uh, reference on this subject uh, of God being pleased by holiness. Proverbs 15, verses 8 to 9. The sacrifice of the wicked is an abomination to the Lord, but the prayer of the upright is his delight. The way of the wicked is an abomination unto the Lord, but he loveth him that followeth after righteousness. You can't get any more simple than that. He's pleased and loves those who are living in holiness and righteousness. He doesn't uh, author or ordain sin. That right there shows God's nature, and Calvinism is contradictory to that. Next point is that God is actually grieved and angered by sin when it occurs. Genesis chapter 6, verse 5 to 7. And God saw that the wickedness of man was great in the earth, and that every imagination of the thoughts of his heart was only evil continually. And it repented the Lord that he had made man on the earth, and it grieved him at his heart. And the Lord said, I will destroy man whom I have created from the face of the earth, both man and beast, and the creeping thing, and the fowls of the air, for it repenteth me that I have made them. Okay. I'll, I'll get to my point in the end. I just want to read these verses first. Genesis six, uh, Genesis chapter 18, sorry. Genesis 18, verse 20 down to verse 21. And the Lord said, Because the cry of Sodom and Gomorrah is great, and because their sin is very grievous, I will go down now and see whether they have done, they are, they have done altogether according to the cry of it, which has come unto me, and if not, I will know. The grievous. Ezekiel chapter 6 Verse 9, And they that escape of you shall remember me among the nations, whether they shall be carried captives, because I am broken with their whorish heart, which hath, which hath departed from me, and with their eyes which go whoring after their idols, and they shall loathe themselves for the evils which they have committed in all their abominations. Ah, oh, great. The dog. Alright, sorry about that. The dog wanted to go out, so I just had to take care of the matter. But anyway, Back to the scripture showing that uh, this heresy, this Calvinist heresy of God causing sin contradicts his nature. And now we're, I was showing scriptures on how God is grieved and anger by sin. So I'm going to show two more, actually three more verses on this matter, then go on to the next next subject, refuting this heresy of Calvinism. So, of course, uh, I was going to quote Isaiah chapter 43, verse 24. It says, Thou hast brought me no sweet cane with money, neither hast thou filled me with the fat of thy sacrifices, but thou hast made me to serve with thy sins, and thou hast wearied me with thine iniquities. Uh, Psalms 95 verse 10. 
40 years long was I grieved with this generation and said, it is the people that do err in their heart and they have not known my ways. And Psalms 7 verse 11, God judgeth the righteous and God is angry with the wicked every day. Okay, if God ordains sin, if God caused sin and even created sin, as some Calvinists would say, uh, why is he being angered and being grieved and being basically having, you know, essentially being wearied, his heart is wearied at his own decree and his own ordination? Why is he getting grieved and angered over that? You know, God causes and ordains sin, but then is grieved and broken by it, apparently. You know, his heart's broken by it. It doesn't make any sense. See, the God of Calvinism is self-contradictory. The God of Calvinism is a false God, plain and simple. He ordains sin, but then is grieved over and angered by it. You know, he gets angry at you for doing what he just preordained you to, or ordained you to basically do. You know, that's Calvinism in a nutshell. Next point, refuting this uh, Calvinist heresy is the fact that God actually hates sin too. So God ordains sin, but then he hates what he ordains. <laughs> yeah. Proverbs chapter six, verse 16 to 19. These six things doth the Lord hate, yea, seven are an abomination unto him. A proud look, a lying tongue, hands that shed and hands that shed innocent blood, a heart that deviseth wicked imaginations, feet that be swift in running to mischief, a false witness that speaketh lies, and he that soweth discord among brethren. He hates it. You mean he's not ordaining it, he actually hates when this when these sins happen. And hates those who do it as well, Doc. What these six things that the Lord hate, and uses personal pronouns when referring to those sins. Uh, Psalms 5 verses 4 to 5 For thou art not a God that hath pleasure in wickedness, neither shall evil dwell with thee. The foolish shall not stand in thy sight, thou hatest all workers of iniquity. Simple enough. Psalms 11 verse 5 to 7 The Lord trieth the righteous, but the wicked and him that loveth violence his soul hateth. Upon the wicked he shall rain snares, fire and brimstone, and a horrible tempest. This shall be the portion of their of their cup. For the righteous the Lord loveth righteousness, his countenance doth behold the upright. He loveth righteousness. You know, interesting how that how that goes against this Calvinist heresy. Isaiah sixty one verse eight. For I, the Lord, love judgment, I hate robbery for burnt offering, and I will direct their work in truth, and I will make an everlasting covenant with them. Uh, Zechariah chapter 8, verse 17. And let none of you imagine evil in your hearts against his neighbor, and love no false oath, for all these, for all these, thing, for all these are things that I hate, saith the Lord. He hates these things. You know, imagining evil in your heart. Uh, Hebrews chapter 1 verse 9. Thou hast loved righteousness and hated iniquity. Therefore God, even thy God, hath anointed thee with the oil of gladness above thy fellows. You know, and the parallel verse, actually one that Hebrews 9 is referring to, uh, Hebrews 1 9, uh, Psalms 45 verse 7 says, Thou lovest righteousness and hatest wickedness. Therefore God, thy God, hath anointed thee with the oil of gladness above thy fellows. Simple enough. God he hates when you imagine evil hearts, all this other stuff. He hates, you know, I hate robbery for burnt offerings. I, you know, these six things that the Lord hate. You know, he hates those who love violence. You know, he hates all workers of iniquity. God hates sin, but then he ordains sin. So he's hating it, but then he ordains it. So he's basically hating his own ordination. That's Calvinism in a nutshell for you. They make God ordains what, basically God hates what he ordains. He's grieved by what he ordains. He's pleased with holiness, but then he ordains you to live in unholiness. Yeah. That's Calvinism in a nutshell. Calvinism is a blatant attack on the nature and righteousness of God. Calvinism is a heresy, plain and simple, and I make no bones about it. I used to say that, okay, well, they're just off on a few points. I, I had some grace for Calvinism, but as I study it more and more, and as I go back and forth with them more and more, uh, it's full on heresy. It's full on just Gnostic heresy, and it's, it's a blatant attack on the character of God. So anyway, don't be deceived by Calvinism. May the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ be with all the brethren. Goodbye.